yeah um this is a sad one isn't it or sad one if you care but um it looks like chris D'Elia's career in hollywood is officially done 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 which is interesting because it seems like since the la times article released alleging that chris D'Elia was accosting um underage girls on instagram who have been trying to creep into dms trying to fly them out and places like that it feels like that initial allegation that was refuted by chris Lear's team when they uh, released the entire emails or gave more context to the emails that were released or the dms that were sent um it kind of felt as if what actually had happened was that chris Lear was just a horny fuck uh, was trying to smash all these fans which he probably shouldn't be doing anyway right especially if you're at that level of i don't know the power thing isn't really a good place but i guess if you're that uh, maybe maybe it's just an adult thing right if you're a celebrity at that age and you have fans that are quite young and impressionable, you should be taking it upon yourself to be the adult in the situation. And if they are trying to come onto you and they're of age, you should be trying to deal with it in the most adult way possible, right? Um, and I guess he didn't do that. I guess running around town, running around the country, uh, trying to hook up with randoms um, at the different places he's stopping at, probably eventually caught up with him. But I think the accusation that he was purposely trying to go after girls that are underage has basically been proved false he's not a nonce yeah he's not a kitty fiddler um he's just somebody that's aggressively horny and tries to sleep with every fan that likes his pictures you know some people do that it is what it is i guess we so it's a conversation for another day about how men should maybe uh, act with their fans of teenage horny attractive women coming or girls coming into their dms it's a whole different thing whole different ball game to deal with I'm, I'm imagining um to get used to especially for comedians who aren't necessarily usually um looked at as the heart problems of the entertainment industry so i guess it's a whole different ball game to deal with and address in the situation how to kind of handle it but what we do know is that he handled it very poorly he didn't do a good job at it but you can't say this guy is a pedophile because he just isn't but i guess in hollywood it's enough to essentially ruin his name and make him radioactive so that no um no student wants to work with him or put their name attached to him in any way shape or form and his own friends in comedy who were you know talking a big game about being independent and not being beholden to the hollywood industry and doing their own thing and podcasting is a whole new different realm they back on under pressure they all kind of distanced themselves from him didn't really back him up apart from sam Tripoli, i think for the most part everyone kind of threw him under the bus uh brian callan brendan shaw being the you know the main two culprits crying on their show sobbing in tears um as if they'd never heard of chris being a woman as if they'd never heard of him maybe bringing a couple of girls around the comedy store who maybe or maybe who were or maybe weren't underage or appeared to look like they were really young as if it caught them all by surprise right um completely crying sobbing as if they never knew the guy and it was all news to them um sam trippy was anyone that kind of defended them but i guess this news isn't to be su that surprising considering what's going on in the entertainment in, in cinema world i think we're movie industry I guess with most movies being affected by COVID-19, they can't do full premieres and full releases with packed cinemas, you know, limited capacity seating is basically affecting their bottom dollar. A lot of these stu film studios are not going to want to take any chances. If you've got any kind of mud or, you know, stains on your name, they're going to want to reshoot your scenes just so they, they can have any ability to make some kind of return on their investment. And this is one of the cases, Tig Notaro is replacing Crystal Lear. It's funny, isn't it? Because Tig Notaro is a bloody woman, right? She's replacing Crystal Lear. I don't know what says about Tig Notaro. I'm not sure how she will take it. Um, I guess any job is, is, a, is a job in this kind of climate we're in at the moment. If she gets a check from it, she's going to be happy. But it must it must be a bit of a kick in the stomach to be replaced, to, to be the replacement of somebody under these circumstances. And maybe as well, because most likely than not, what happened was that she probably auditioned for that role and didn't get it and Chris did. So they probably just went back to her and said, hey, would you want to do it? So that double dipping thing is a bit of an issue. But in general, it's an indication that most probably Chris Alia's Hollywood career is probably over and he probably should be spending his time trying to do the Louis C.K. route and just talk directly to his fans if he thinks he's ever going to become because i guess it's a it's a heart-wrenching story if you're a fan of chris alia because you know in the last few months in the last few months prior to him filming this show he did mention about his aspirations of wanting to be an action movie star and going to hollywood that was one of his main goals in, in general wasn't it? and he was kind of taking acting very seriously and doing all these classes and stuff so this is going to definitely hurt him but 
this is definitely the nail in the coffin in terms of his Hollywood career going forward. This is from the Hollywood Report. It's a technical trial to replace Chris Delia and Zack Snyder's Army of the Dead. Uh, it says the movie shot last year, but a round of reshoots with Port Natal in the heart of the action. Zack Snyder's zombie movie, Army of the Dead, may be done shooting, but it doesn't mean a new actor can't be added to the roll call. Tig Notari, the actress and stand-up comic who recently appeared in Star Trek Discovery, has joined Netflix movie and will replace Crystal Lea, the comedian who has been accused of sexually harassing under his girls. Actually, she's really good in Star Trek Discovery too, by the way. Um, I really recommend you watch that. It doesn't get a lot of uh, good reviews online because I guess it's it's got a lot of... Um, work social justice politics involved in it but i guess if you just look at it just from purely as a star trek tv series it's pretty decent i recommend you check it out especially the first couple of seasons it continues here it says the movie which was all uh, which has which has an all-star um international cast led by david uh, dave ba ba baptista is that baptista is that the wrestler right i'm assuming right uh rap principal photography late last year and had been in post-production when the pandemic hit America's shores, prompting a lockdown in Hollywood. Snyder, who co-wrote and directed the movie, worked uh, with post houses to keep the process going. The movie will now undergo a quick round of reshoots to incorporate Natara's role. Due to the actors being already dispersed post-filming and due to the pandemic restrictions, the incorporation will be a combination of techniques from actually reshooting scenes and opposite an actual partner to using green screen and CGI technology to blend her in. Jesus Christ. They're basically erasing him from the movie after an allegation on social media. That's insane. Insane. Um, Dead uh, takes place after a zombie outbreak in Las Vegas, centering on a group of mercenaries who take the ultimate gamble, venturing into the quarantine zone to pull off the greatest heist ever attempted. It does sound like an absolute terrible movie, though, to be honest. Um, Ella Purnell, and uh, all these names, uh, the, the, and also in the cast, Snyder producing the movie along with Deborah Snyder and Wesley Collar. Sexual misconduct allegation service against the Lear in June. Allegation the comedy has denied. In aftermath, he was dropped by his agency, and plans for his unscripted show were scrapped by Netflix. Natara, a cancer survivor who's known for her mining her own life in a version of material, wrote, produced, and, and starred in a critically acclaimed semi-autobiography Amazon series called One Mississippi, which she co-created with Diablo, Diablo Cody. Her sophomore comedy album released live was the number one selling comedy album in 2012, nominated for a Grammy Award. The multi hyphenate has also released stand up specials, including Happy to Be Here on Netflix and Boyish Girl Interrupted on HBO, which was nominated for a Grammy and award winning Emmy. As an actress, she recently appeared in Noah Hawley's 2019 um, Natalie Portman drama Lucy in the Sky and Paramount film Natara is read by ICM Partners. But yeah, man, he's been completely raised, isn't it? He's been whitewashed. He's been not whitewashed, but he's been erased from Hollywood. Uh, big blow again. I, I don't know, man. I think it's unfair, personally, for me. I, I do think there is an element of, you know, there is an element of uh, trial by social media in that regard. I think the allegations that were put out were wishy washy at best. Um, I think again, like I said, he can be accused of being a creep. He can be accused of being a little bit too um, sexually aggressive with his fans. Just because someone likes your pic doesn't mean you just slide in their DMs and trying to cost them to try and come to your green room. But if they do and they're adults and they're willing to, that is whatever. It's the a situation between two consenting adults. Um, I guess the situation where he kind of double backed onto a girl that he asked her age and she was underage and she came back a year later and she was overage, that was a weird one. But in general, man, I think describing him as a child rapist or as a groomer or something was super extreme um but again this is hollywood this industry that we do at the moment cancel culture is what it is um if anything the benefit he has is that we live in an age where if he sets up a patreon and he p puts out a podcast behind a paywall and he has his own fans contribute and he keeps running his merch and puts on his own shows he'll be fine um if anything this is probably a good thing for him because it's probably revealed who his actual real friends are it's actually revealed who his actual actual fans are as well because the people that dropped him probably would never have been his fan i never his fans in the first place anyway but i don't know man it's just it's just um it's annoying that hollywood would do this at this moment especially when he hasn't had a chance to really fight his case in that regard but again i do understand with the pandemic going on at the moment they just can't take any chances they can't allow this film to go out as is with Chris D'Elia in it, have entire articles. Because again, you know what's going to happen. If, he, if he's in the movie, there's going to be a whole slew of articles coming out, uh, bes besmirching the studio for putting him in a movie. Zack Snyder's going to get it in the neck. It's going to be all unnecessary trouble that no one wants. You know, the whole press interviews and stuff around the film will be centered around Chris D'Elia and these allegations. No one wants that smoke on their name at all. So I definitely get it. But I guess for Chris D'Elia, that's a confirmation that his Hollywood career is donezo.